So last week we noted that uh, the disciples essentially ask three questions. Jesus, as they're leaving the temple building, says, not one stone will be left upon another. And as they're astonished by these words, uh, basically a prophecy that the temple will be destroyed fairly soon, the disciples ask three questions. When will this be? Uh, when will this temple be destroyed, essentially? Um, when is your second coming? And when is the end of time or the end of the age or the end of the world? We noted last week, uh, the first question was answered in 70 AD when Titus of Rome uh, destroyed the temple. And the area where the temple was, literally not one stone was left upon another. Uh, There's a lot of discussion about the Wailing Wall, uh, but um, from his prophecy, we know the Wailing Wall was not, you know, the actual uh, temple or part of wall of the temple since that was destroyed. But we're going to get to the uh, second question this morning. Um, when is uh, the second coming? When are you coming back? And so... Um, in order to do that, we need to just examine a couple of sections of this chapter, and we'll try to do this quickly. First, beginning with verses 3 through 14, which essentially uh, these verses have been fulfilled uh, in the life of the early church and the disciples, along with, of course, the temple's destruction. Again, he sat on the Mount of Olives, verse 3. They said, tell us when these things will be. Uh, when will the uh, sign of your coming be in the end of the age? And Jesus said, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars, rumors of wars. Be not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. And notice how he's combining um, all three of these questions in many of his answers throughout the text. Um, the end is not yet. Um, he says, nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom, there will be famines and earthquakes in various places, and all these things are but the beginning of the birth pains. And now he talks to the disciples. They will deliver you to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations, talking about the Jewish people. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise. Well, we see them all over the television. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. We see this in our world as well. But the one who endures to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So uh, in Acts 2, um, Jesus, uh, or excuse me, Peter talked about how the gospel be preached uh, to the nations as Jesus did, and Acts 2, essentially, it says that there were people or representatives from every nation um, that were there at Pentecost. And so there was at least a partial fulfillment of the proclamation of the gospel to all nations. And certainly in our modern age, we have seen that. Um, so uh, a lot of these things have happened. Uh, but obviously, Jesus has not returned, and the end has not come. And so as you move to the next section, now we start talking about the conditions for the second coming of Christ. He says, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel, that's in Daniel 9, and uh, then let all those who are in Judea, it says, flee. Let the one on the housetop not go uh, to take what's in his house. Let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for the women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation. So again, before the second coming, the great tribulation from the beginning, uh, not which has not been since the beginning of time or the beginning of the world until now, and no, never will be, verse 21. And unless those days were cut short, verse 22, no flesh or no human being uh, would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. If anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect or the church or God's people. See, I have told you beforehand, so if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, don't go out. If they say, look, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man Whenever the corpses are there, the vultures will gather. So we're going to take that section uh, again. 
So a lot of this refers to the second question and a little bit about the third one as well. The end of the age, he said, uh, has won't be here yet, uh, even though there will be signs of wars and famines and rumors of wars, nation against nation, pestilence, all these issues, many of which uh, we are seeing in our world today. And he says, but the end is not yet. Uh, first, there has to be uh, a desolation of the temple, which, by the way, um, isn't built yet. Uh, and he's also saying, before I return uh, for my second coming, there will be another temple that will be desolated. Um, now, some say this was fulfilled in, in uh, A.D. 70 when Titus came. But there are, there are por portions of, of what Jesus is saying, obviously, that did not happen. Um, some of it did, but not all of it. And so we refer to Daniel 9, where Daniel also says that in the end times, there'll be a, a world leader, an antichrist. They will make a covenant with Israel. This is in Daniel 9, 24 through 7. And they will break that covenant, and he will uh, defile the temple, and so on. Uh, this has happened many times uh, in the history of Israel. And Jesus says those things have to happen, including a tribulation, uh, before a second coming. So I'm looking at the clock, and we're going to stop there. Uh, you need to read this uh, on your own. Continue to read Matthew 24. Hope I'm whetting your appetite as Jesus is answering these three questions. And uh, that will continue uh, next week. We'll expand on this a little more. So thanks for tuning in. I hope to see uh, you Sunday. Uh, some of you I'll see tomorrow night at the Daniel study. And, of course, uh, please, if you can, uh, come to the 6 o'clock uh, Seder with Jews for Jesus it's not something we do often, but I think yeah, you would find it uh, uh, a great experience, uh, a, a wonder um, for us who aren't familiar with how um, we can see Christ uh, through the Seder, and uh, they'll be explaining all these things. So thanks for your time. Uh, let's pray. God, we thank you, uh, Father, for this day, and uh, open our hearts to understand your prophecies and your answers to these disciples' questions in Matthew 24 and 5. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless all of you. We'll see you soon. Bye now.